Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at this which is the Miniware DS213 oscilloscope. Uh, Miniware contacted me um, a while ago and asked if I was interested in reviewing this. I wasn't familiar with it so I said certainly I'll have a look and, um, and tell you what I think and so that's the subject of this video. So let's start by having a look what's in the box. First thing to say is that when the um, instrument arrived it was uh, packed in bubble wrap and then put in another box, so very well packed indeed and certainly a great deal better than um, uh, some stuff that uh, wings its way from China. I've already removed the scope from the box but just to, to show you what you get, it's actually a nice little branded box. Uh, you get obviously get the instrument here, uh, it comes packed up with a screen protector on etc. You get a manual, um, a card which is quite handy from a quick reference point of view until you've learnt the buttons. Uh, and the scope itself lifts out and under here I've removed them but there are two probes USB, a micro USB lead and then some uh, little attachments for the um, for the probes to allow you to um, insulate the tips or to uh, to mark them up so you know which channel is which um, so uh, from that point of view it's uh, very nice and while I've got the scope there I think the first thing I would say about the instrument itself is that um, it's in a metal um, box rather than plastic and it feels very solid indeed. Now I appreciate that feeling solid and being solid are a different thing but um, in terms of giving you a, a level of confidence yes this certainly um, feels like it's something that uh, is substantial and of course the other advantage um, of a, having a metallic uh, box is that um, it keeps some of the noise out of the scope and also it stops some um, noise getting into it as well so um, uh, that's good and uh, obviously there's a microcontroller in there which will be producing noise so that hopefully will um, result in some of the output being, uh, being attenuated by the box. Now leads themselves, they're sort of conventional looking scope leads really, the only difference I should point out is that the connectors are different, they're like a, a, a push connector actually that slides in so if you um, are going to want extra ones of these you're going to have to make sure you get the, the right connector um, but they certainly seem very positive once they're in there and yeah so there we go and uh, we'll have a look at the um, operation of the scope in, in a moment but uh, if I switch on uh, start up is very quick indeed there we go and that's the scope up and running so I think that that's pretty fast right let's now get a setup and look at, it, at the operation of the instrument itself so let's have a bit more of a detailed look at the um, Miniware scope then um, so I've got uh, channel 1 plugged in which is the, the blue trace and what I'm going to do is uh, get a signal and the good news is um, I don't need um, a signal generator because there's actually one on the scope so what you've got is you've got blue and yellow trace are channels analog channels one and two and there's two uh, digital traces with the connections on that side uh, which are channels um, if you like uh, C and D uh, I've turned those off uh, just for clarity so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the output of the signal generator to the input of one of the channels and we should hopefully see there that we've got um, get the scope into run mode we should hopefully see there we've got a, a square wave um, currently at 2 megahertz and you can hopefully see the measurement is shown up there at 2 megahertz as well um, and if I now move across to the frequency I can reduce that to, to 1 megahertz um, that's 50 kilohertz let's just go down to 10 kilohertz and then what we can do then is adjust the time base such that we can um, see the waveform so there's other waveforms available uh, we've got sine wave this is all at uh, 10 kilohertz sine wave uh, triangle wave and uh, sawtooth there and then we go back to square so that's that's quite a handy little feature to have if you um, 
for me that increases the appeal of this because if you're just a casual oscilloscope user and you don't need all the bells and whistles then um, you know potentially the ability to have the ability to produce a signal um, which you can then feed into something and you can look at the the output that's obviously potentially very useful so uh, I'm not going to cover what other other people's reviews have covered particularly but run stop here and we'll pause the display uh, pressing the button here allows me to save waveforms um, it's as simple as that as well as saving waveforms I can also save um, the buffer and I can also save a, a CSV file um, and so there's quite uh, comprehensive facilities there to do that um, and obviously it would save both channels if um, if required so what you've got here are two wheels to operate um, the interface now uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of people who will say oh it's a pain in the neck you've got to learn to use it uh, yeah you have got to learn to use it but I had to learn to use me my mobile phone and um, once you've you know spent a few minutes just having a look at the manual and just playing with the thing it sort of starts to make sense so you've got these two wheels here and this wheel the A wheel essentially does the adjustments I'm adjusting the frequency there and the B wheel uh, adjusts what it is that you're going to uh, adjust so for instance if I move it across to the the pur flashing purple there and uh, I now move the A wheel you see it turns on the C channel for um, the digital input should I want it yeah um, and if I go across to the blue flashing 50 millivolts there I can then change the amplitude scale obviously this the trigger starts to fail there because it can't see sufficient waveform but yeah that's how you adjust the time base again if I hop up another one to the um, uh, the channel there I can get DC coupling um, AC coupling go back to or I can turn the channel off as you can see there so let's go back to AC coupling which will hopefully cause the um, trigger to start making sense again so there you go there's your uh, uh, your controls and this this B wheel actually moves right round so if you keep on going it will roll off the end and work its way back uh, right up here so I can come right back to time base there and I can tweak the time base like so so that's the the general sort of uh, controls on the scope I don't think there's um, a lot of point in going to master detail because I know others have done it but um, as I said when I um, looked at the box just now it feels really solid so it feels like you've got a, a decent piece of kit and the fact that it's open source um, is also potentially quite handy I'm going to put some links in the description to the manual to the circuit diagram which is also available so you can see there's a there's a um, microcontroller but there's also FPGAs in here doing doing the heavy lifting and there's uh, a circuit diagram which you can peruse at your leisure as I say I'll put a link in the, the description uh, also you can have a look at the manual in the description and there is I found on github somebody already written um, some alternative software this came loaded up with the latest version so that's what you're seeing um, but the beauty of it is uh, it's certain the source code is available for the microcontroller and for the FPGAs so um, if you've got that skill I haven't but if you've got that skill there's no reason at all why you can't um, you couldn't write the software to to do something else that you wanted what it currently doesn't do and may perhaps do in a, in a future update, it doesn't do XY mode so we can't um, look at lesser JS figures but um, I suspect that's something that uh, that might happen in the future so that's a general layout of the, the scope and its controls okay I'm going to try and show you um, something else that we can get the scope to do um, which will hopefully make some sense so what I've got here is I've got a, a parallel tuned circuit here a variable inductor about it's about 63 micro henrys and 100 nanofarad capacitor and I've got that uh, those two components connected in parallel so it's a tank circuit if you like or a parallel tuned circuit 
and I'm feeding that with my signal generator and I'm feeding it with a swept frequency from 20 to 140 kilohertz and I'm doing that sweep every 30 milli, uh, 300 milliseconds sorry so three times just over three times a second and the blue trace on channel one here is the output from the sync on my signal generator so this is a, a sends a pulse every time it starts a, a scan so you if you wanted to do the measurements there you'd discover that was a 300 millisecond pulse and channel two so I've, and i've got it triggering off channel one channel two i've got the output from the tune circuit so i'm going to plug that in in fact yeah there we go let's plug that in and you can probably see why it's a bit confusing so now we've got this what looks like an envelope waveform so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to move the um control across to uh, channel one and i'm going to increase the voltage so that effectively the square trace it's there but it's currently not viewable on the screen so what we're seeing now really is the the channel one trace and we'll just drop that down a little bit in amplitude just hopefully it'll make some sense so um what we've got here is the swept frequency coming through the tune circuit and you might have already spotted that there's a an envelope shape here and that's because the amplitude of this wave is is a function of the of the resonance of that tune circuit as the frequency sweeps from from 20 kilohertz here across to 140 kilohertz there and the reason you're getting that sweep is because i'm triggering off off channel one on that square wave pulse so i'm not triggering off the um the channel that i'm actually wanting to look at and what you've effectively got there is a form of bowed plot uh, so you've got uh, frequency against uh, amplitude as opposed to normally getting uh, amplitude against time which is what you normally expect from an oscilloscope so this is a bowed plot if you want to look at how that works um, I'll put a link up top there to a video I've done on that in the past that you can see it but essentially what we've got here is the resonance of that tune circuit so if you just make a mental note that the, the peak there is roughly in the middle roughly about above that gap between the, the green and the red um, position indicator so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the slug in this uh, coil if I can do that and I'm going to first of all pull the slug right out so I'm reducing the inductance and hopefully you can see that what's happened there is the peak has now moved to the right as the frequency is resonant frequency has increased and now I'm going to uh, wind the slug right back and i'm going to put that iron core slug hopefully right in the middle of the coil and two things you'll notice there hopefully first one is that the resonant point the high point has now moved to there it used to be between the red and the green it's now moved to there and also it's um for want of a better phrase it's more pointy so if i just wind it right out again here the the, the peaks moved and it's also less of a peak if i wind it right back in uh, the peaks back there and it's a little bit more pointy okay it's not the easiest things to see but what you're essentially seeing there is you're seeing a change in the resonant frequency of that tuned circuit but you're also seeing its Q or quality factor increasing um, as the frequency drops so there we go that's a, a bit of a, a novel use for the uh, DS213 and you know for the casual um, tuner up of radios you've got a potential here to um, put a swept frequency through your IF chain and you could look at it um, using this scope and you could use it to, to tune up your intermediate frequency okay well that's the DS213 oscilloscope um, it's encouraging that it's open source uh, and indeed uh, I will put a link as I said to the circuit diagram which which I've got here but uh, there's there's lots of information about it the source code both for the the for the microcontroller and for the FPGAs is available not that I have the skills to do anything about that but certainly um, uh, I know some people have been doing that as the bode plots are concerned which was the second um, application I showed you just now um, if you're not familiar definitely worth having a look at that link which I, I put up earlier uh, but bode plots essentially 
uh, are a way of producing a display that's a little bit like a spectrum analyzer. Now I saved the data uh, on the scope while I was showing you that. So here is um, uh, a waveform and this is taken from the from the CSV file that I saved and you actually get two columns in, in Excel and um, I've simply taken the column that's got the, the waveform data in and, and plotted it as a, a scatter chart with a, with a line and you can see the the shape of the waveform. Now when you're watching it on the actual screen the the movement of the waves make it looks a bit makes it look uh, a little bit um, more like a, a a curve than that, but uh, hopefully you you get the general idea. And if you cut that wave in half, so have a look at that picture there. That that's what you uh, normally expect to see on a boat plot. Now what I did was I took the um, the tuned circuit that I was using for that and I just attached it to my spectrum analyzer. So here's the result I got from my spectrum analyzer and I think you can see that the curve is indeed very similar to that that was being produced by the, the DS213. So yeah that that's um, a nice bit of kit and I thought there's one other comparison I've not done that I perhaps should and that's to compare it with um, this device which is the, the Tiny SA and as you can see um, they're very similar size, um, so if you're, if you've got space as an issue, um, you can get yourself an oscilloscope and a spectrum analyzer, and they really don't take up a, a great deal of um, of space. So yeah, um, I'm impressed with that. It's got uh, a 15 megahertz uh, bandwidth, so it's not a fantastically high bandwidth, um, but 15 megahertz is uh, actually pretty good for. For most applications unless you're into RF, VHF or UHS or, some, or something. Um, and what I do like is that um, you can actually um, get four traces on there. There's two analog and two digital uh, on this one. Um, but that's um, quite a comprehensive set of for features for a, a small instrument. So hope that's made some sense um, and it might encourage you to perhaps have a look. I'll put links to the um, the various things I've mentioned in the description so please please um, feel free to have a look at those. Thanks very much for watching and uh, hopefully look forward to seeing you on the next video.